Welcome back, 0K fans, to the November 2019 1v1 tournament. We are in round 5! The last round! Well, probably not. There's going to be tiebreakers, most likely. But, yeah. Pretty close. I mean, if Kingstead is right, I'll probably win their matches, and then they'll probably have a tiebreak match between themselves. And Saniac and Pet Turtle is who we're watching. And Saniac is ahead. So if Pet Turtle wins, then they're both 3-2. If Saniac wins, then it'll probably be a three-way tie between Saniac, Kingstead, and Izzeride. And we are on Vantage! A map which I've described before as a map where it's hard to know how flat it isn't. Because... it is! At least it kind of is. I don't know. It's... it's alright. But yeah, so... His map... is full of crags and... mesas and it's kind of... I don't know. It is what it is. Anyway, into the game! So, Pet Turtle going for rovers. Saniac going for shields. That should be pretty even, I think. I mean, yeah, I mentioned it's kind of not flat, but it's mostly pretty flat. Just this one little dip in the center. That's the one thing. If you avoid getting screwed up by that, you should be fine. Nah, I think they'll be fine. Saniac immediately going for expansion. Pet Turtle, however, with that dart, just to scout out a bit. Maybe get a bit of raiding. Bandit should spot the dart. Oh, no, it doesn't. Sani oh, Pet Turtle. Pet Turtle. You might be able to... Nah, you're not going to get anything. Darts don't deal enough damage. Get some scouting in, though. At least that's something. Scorcher coming in over to the south of the base. But Saniac already well ahead of that. Has the Bandit alongside the Convict. That being said, the Scorcher might not even care. I think the Scorcher can deal enough damage. If it goes in close, it'll actually take out the Bandit. Same time the Dart over to the north side of the map. Not too concerned either. And there is the Scorcher testing the theory. Does indeed take out the Bandit, leaving the Convict very vulnerable, forcing it to retreat and taking out the, or stopping the expansion from being built. Doesn't manage to take out the Convict itself, though. So, a little bit of a delay by Petrol on Saniac's part, but not enough of one to make a huge difference. And now that Scorcher deciding to go in and commit suicide, while another Scorcher, thanks to the distraction, comes in and does take out that Convict. Actually, Oh, wow, what? Seriously? Oh, that convict is the luckiest convict alive. Ah, uh, never mind. It was the luckiest convict alive. It, it kind of pushed it a little far. It, it pushed its luck. Given that, actually, Saniac is getting a really tight spot now because this Scorcher doesn't have a lot of resistance. Granted, there are bandits coming over to Pet Turtle's base, but the Scorchers that are there, not a whole lot in there. So yeah, Pet Turtle is... Pet Turtle's doing okay. They're kind of having a bit of a... bit of a hard time. But overall, they're ahead economically. They have a strong energy base. They have a reasonable strong amount of territory. They have these Scorchers that are stopping the expansions, and especially killing that earlier Convict is really slowing Saniac down. I mean, the Commander's coming in here, but Pet Turtle... They're double expanding. I mean, in about a minute, Pet Turtle will be ahead by about 5 metal per second. So yeah, Saniac is not doing so hot. I would like to see Pet Turtle build up a caretaker here in the next minute or so. I just don't expect that's going to be necessary for a little while. I don't, sorry, I don't expect we're going to see it for a little while. It's going to be necessary pretty soon. It's honestly necessary right now, but we'll probably not see that. Just because it, like, it's clear that Pet Turtle is not focusing on that so much. They're focusing much more on forward defenses and on raiding. That's the one thing Saniac might have is they are getting a bit of a stronger production base. Their economy is now, just now catching up. Especially in terms of energy economy. But they don't have a lot of defense. Oof, that Lotus coming in here. Oh, that, if that command, if that Scorcher had managed to get in just under the shields, it would have been a different story. Still, Scorcher's over to the south side of the map, dealing a bit of harassment, which puts Pet Turtle again on the advantage side. It's just that Pet Turtle does not have production. They are not building more things. They're really playing this for the rush. And I don't see that working out. Saniac has enough defenses in their main base. They're not going to be torn apart by Scorchers anytime soon. Pet Turtle getting up a Mason for obvious reasons. Get the Caretaker up. Get that get that assistance going in the factory. I just wish Pet Turtle had done that a minute ago. For their sake. Saniac, I mean, they're not exactly ahead as a result. Right? Pet Turtle is still way ahead. They still have a very strong defense for what Saniac is giving. 
they've still done a lot of work harassment wise. But Saniac has a fair bit of reclaim to work with and also does have the Caretaker. They are managing to use that reclaim as it comes. Well, okay, they're not actually accessing quite a bit. But the stored reclaim, what's left of it, there's an extra 500 metal worth of reclaim being pushed into the factory. Pet Turtle, on the other hand, they are just now getting their Caretaker up. Again, should have started a minute ago. Still, the Caretaker is up, so at least that gives them a lot to work with. And again, they still have a bit of an advantage going forward. Pet Turtle is expanding. They have continued to get up more defenses, more metal extractors. They, of course, have the faster units to work with. And the Scorchers are still doing a lot of damage going around the map. They take out the Convicts. This will be totally worth it. Oh. And there it is. There is the attack on the Convicts. And that's one Convict down. The other Convict is also down. And the Scorchers... They finish with the Bandit. They do, for good measure, take out the Bandit as well. That's a lot of Convicts down. Unfortunately, these bandits will be able to take out the Lotus. One of them will survive to the end. There's nothing else coming for defense. No, never mind. They're retreating. They're not even bothering. They're just running away. That's that's good for Pet Turtle. Managing to maintain the defenses. What's not so good is that they aren't, you know... Okay, there's the repeat builds. So they aren't using repeat build or anything to make sure that they're constantly using their money because they are accessing, but now they have. So that's all sorted. Man, the Scorcher Dark combo is working out very beautifully. Saniac's got to be building up more, but now the harassment again in the south side of the map, pretty much undefended. We are seeing a switch over, though. Lotus, or not Lotus, Outlaw. Outlaw, Thug, Rogue. Good shift. That'll help get rid of the Lotuses. So that's the one thing, is that Saniac right now does have more information. They have a more diverse army. But again, Pet Turtle, they just have more to work with. Actually, throwing in Dominatrices, because why not? Just take all those units away instead of, you know, why build your own variety of units when you just take your opponents? Makes sense. Scorch coming in here, getting rid of all the Lotuses, getting rid of all the Lotuses. The Convict will fall soon afterwards. Saniac having a, having just a hell of a time just setting themselves up. They finally get a bit of mileage on Pet Turtle's base, but of course, they're behind by 12 metal per second, and the Dominatrices are going to be coming in here. It's a bit tricky, because the Rogues could actually stop the Dummies without too much trouble. I just... Don't see that happening. The one thing I don't also see happening is the Scorch is actually dealing any meaningful damage into the base. That seems unlikely. So, there's that Scorcher coming in here, and that's what I was talking about. They are falling apart. People in the chat talking about aggression, by the way. We'll just get to that as we're a downtime. So, the thing about aggression in 0k is that it can pay off really well. The game does encourage aggression. But, as we're seeing right now, Saniac's actually in a comeback position. They have a fairly strong army to start pushing in. Not a whole lot of defenses coming from Pet Turtle. They have the Dominatrices, but the Rogue can deal with that. And Pet Turtle just doesn't have a whole lot they can actually go with. They've kind of lost momentum. Like, if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering aggro, this is the same problem of you're, you've are you tried, you've dealt a lot of damage, but you don't have a lot of steam left. And Pet Turtle at this point, their economic advantage is falling apart. They're not really able to harass all that much with the defenses being built up and the more expensive riot units being built up. Their commander actually is heavily threatened about to go down and cannot jump away, by the way. Should point out. So Petrol just lost their commander. That is a huge blow. Putting Saniac ahead economically as Pet Turtle now has to try to find some way of dealing with all the forces coming in. Can't really do anything with the Scorchers anymore. Those have become useless. And their commander has gone down, leaving the entire south side of the map effectively undefended. Saniac's own commander just digging a hole for themselves while they try to heal up, but this is what I mean. Pet Turtle has lost a lot of steam. Like, the aggression was just too much. Now, of course, the Dominatrices are still here, which gives Pet Turtle an opening. But the fact that Pet Turtle lost as much as they... Like, the fact that Pet Turtle lost their commander like that, the fact that Pet Turtle had... and now is behind economically, the fact that all the Scorchers became useless, like, got hard countered, I mean, if they used carefully, they can kind of get around the map where they need to be and stop convicts from rebuilding. So that at least hold Saniac back as Pet Turtle tries to get their economy back on track after the loss of their commander. But it may not be enough. If those scorches go down, that's still it. And as we're seeing right now, Saniac decides, just bring the entire army along with the character with the convict. Although, to be fair, they could also just reclaim. They got 400 metal worth of reclaim right there. That's, no, that's a good 80 seconds worth of reclaim. Just go for it. So yeah, at this point, 
Saniac does not have a lot of options that can actually get... Mm. Sorry. Petrol doesn't have a lot of options that get them to win. Saniac is losing a lot of stuff. Like, Pet Turtle is definitely doing well in harassment, but there's lost their last Scorcher. Switching over to a mid-game composition, and there's the Dominatrix doing its job. Actually getting rid of the rogues first. That is ideal. Having gotten the rogues out of the way, there is very little that can actually stop the Dominatrix's long term. Which means Pet Turtle might still have this. Although Pet Turtle on top of that has managed to maintain an economic advantage. The continued raiding and destruction of convicts has meant Pet Turtle really doesn't have to worry too much as they're also still expanding. They haven't really been raided themselves. I mean, this is one small group, one small squad over to the north side of the map from Saniac, but Pet Turtle is not even thinking about it. And neither, apparently, is Saniac. They haven't decided to use that to attack or harass or anything in any way that would distract Pet Turtle and pull them back. Ah, never mind. There, there they go. Finally going in there. Actually, that north expansion is going to be heavily damaged, but that's... Well, Pet Turtle decides just to bear down on Saniac's forces, and again, not a whole lot going to stop it because, well, the rogues are blocking the defenders. Oh, sorry, rogues are blocking the defenders. Ah, blocking the dominatrix. No unit is called defender anymore. That's no, it's called a picket now. Yeah, they're blocking for the dummies. And Squirks coming to the south side, eliminating the one rogue over there. The forces over to the north are doing their damage, and that's good. Ooh. Oh, and the roach coming in here. That is even better. Nothing's really going to defend against that. If the Dominatrices get killed, of course, that gets rid of the Rogue. But again, the Rogues can just stop that. And they belong to Pet Turtle now. They're Pet Turtle's Rogues. And that means it's just... That Saniac being pushed back. And, of course, with all the Skirmishers coming in here, that's that's a problem. On top of that, the Fencer, fencer re Reinforcements have come in. Scorches coming in the bottom. Scorches shouldn't be able to deal with this too easily. But Fencers might be able to. Dominatrices on top of that. And a nice little solar wall, because why not have a solar wall? It's never a bad idea. So, Pet Turtle with an army advantage. Saniac with the, their economy coming back on track. And a massive amount of reclaim to work with. But the Scorchers coming in. The Outlaw really being the only threat for the Scorchers. And it's out of position relative to the Thug. Meaning the Scorchers can start taking it out. As you can see, the Dominatrix is targeting that Outlaw. Wants the Outlaw. They want it to belong to... I mean, granted, if, it, if Pet Turtle did grab that, that would be amazing same time, Pet Turtle with more harassment over to the south side of the map. Getting rid of yet another convict while taking care of more metal extractors. Again, keeping Saniac behind. And there's that Dommy on the Outlaw. But it does not last. Deal some slow damage, though. That's useful. Still makes that a little bit harder for Saniac to assault. But the main problem is that Saniac is losing their entire main base. And I mean, losing it is being handed over to Pet Turtle. It's not just dying. It Oh, take the factory. Please take the factory. That's the best way to win with Dominatrix is to conquer the factory. Or capture the factory. And that's exactly what's happened. The factory's been captured. We're playing CNC now. The factory belongs to them. So yeah, Petrol. They just they just self deed the factory. Wow. We are playing CNC now. <laughs> Send the engineer in self building. That's how you do it. So yeah, Saniac without a factory, having to rebuild another one thanks to the Dominatrix just killing it. Actually, that's really clever from Pet Turtle, because they realize, of course, the Dominatrix are going to die. But hey, so long as the factory is dead, you just self-D the factory and it's over. I mean, the most fun thing is to capture the factory and start using it against your opponent, but given the circumstances, Pet Turtle made the right call. That being said, Saniac still has a very scary army. And the Dominatrix, they're doing a decent job of dealing with it. But there's only so much they can do with all the rogues in play. And the Grand Defense is coming in on top of that. Not managing to do all that much thanks to the Caretakers. But, hey, that might not matter. Pet Turtle now losing some of the Dominatrices. All the Dominatrices. In fact, losing a lot of units. Don't really have an army to work with. That's sort of the thing. Saniac has been consistently building up a larger and larger army. They're, they have a 3,000 medal advantage in terms of... In terms of what they've actually lost. And the Dommies can't really do all that much here. That the Dummies having a hell of a time actually managing to capture anything before going down themselves, so Saniac might still be able to pull this back despite everything. I'm... Yeah, I'm really confused here. I think Saniac... 
No, Saniac's lost this. I, I was a bit confused because I hadn't looked out, but yeah, getting more perspective, looking at the larger picture of the map, this is Saniac's last hope. So Saniac could win this, but they have to win with this assault force right now. Otherwise, Petrol just has too much of the map, has too much of an economic base. They can rebuild far too easily. And it looks like Saniac is going to manage to take something. Petrol could still rebuild their factories over to the north side of the map, but yeah, there's not a whole lot in terms of actual army. And Pet Turtles basically run out of everything, throwing in the towel as Saniac makes an amazing comeback, considering how that game went. Saniac with that one assault force in the middle taken down. This is exactly what I was talking about, because we were talking about aggression earlier. And the thing is, like I said, Pet Turtle ran out of gas. I like these dominatrices. There's some clever play there, but Pet Turtle simply did not have the forces to last into the late game. So Saniac turning it around and now we're likely to get a three-way tie just because that's you know how it works unless Gaunson and Catastrophe win their matches in which case Saniac is just the winner but yeah so that was that well done to Saniac and Petter sorry well done to Saniac just wow I mean really looking at all the stats Saniac Saniac should not have won that the only stat really in their favor is value killed and that paid off just the sheer efficiency is what put them ahead of Pet Turtle, ultimately. I mean, here in the Umber Valley Graph, this is basically where the Dominatrices were built up and then all died. So yeah, that is that, I think. I don't know if anyone else playing around 5 right now. That was a really good game. That was, that was the game to pick to start with. And it looks like Dice and Hyrule done, Sand and Petrol are done. Kingston and Catastrophe are still going. And they're on CCR, so they're going to be a while, so I'm going to just go check that out. Because someone decided CCR was a good idea. Just note that in this one, CCR was actually banned. Uh, in, the turn in the match between Saniac and Pet Turtle. Saniac said no to CCR. But that did not happen here, so yeah, Kingstown Catastrophe on CCR is what we are going to. Alright. Starting out, we have typical CCR start. Rover v. Rover. Actually, a lot of fencer start out coming in too from Kingstead. Catastrophe getting a very strong early economy though as Kingstead managing to hold off the harassment, but Catastrophe taking most of the map on the south side. Kingstead not managing to harass it too well either. The fencers are simply not doing anything against Scorchers and Ravagers. The Ravagers coming in here. Fencers, however, with enough numbers, the Fencers and Scorchers are managing to deal enough damage to Catastrophe to start pushing back, taking that center while Catastrophe going in for a massive raid over the northwest could still slow Kingstead's economy down enough Allowing Catastrophe to push back in the center, push back Kingstead's commander, possibly flank it and surround it. Certainly deal enough damage to push Kingstead back in the back foot. But yeah, Kingstead now open heavily to flanking, losing their commander right in the center of the map. Massive reclaim field available for Catastrophe. Kingstead reclaims or re takes some of the territory back in their base, but Catastrophe does not let that go easily. Now Ravens coming in over the north side of the map from Kings from Catastrophe. Looking, it seems, to take out basically everything that Kingstad has built up. And the Ravens coming in here are going for the fusion plant. Oh no, go with the go with the going fusion. What do you want? Kill something. You're gonna die if you don't kill something. Alright, come on, you. Get over here. Yeah. I don't know. What are you trying to kill? Okay, I don't know what these are do- Oh, why are they trying to kill the- What the heck is going on, Catastrophe? What are your ravens doing? Okay, whatever, they need to go back home. There's, are there air pads? Please tell me there are air pads. We need air pads here. Okay, I'm not sure why the- f Oh, they're on hold- Okay, their hold fire is fine. I just don't know why they weren't targeted to attack something. It's really bizarre from Catastrophe. They're, they're actually falling behind economically from this, and- they could have dealt a huge amount of damage to those ravens. What the heck? Ah, oh, that sucks for Catastrophe. Those ravens... Those ravens could have given them the game. 
Like, take out the fusion plant, take out the factories, take out the care or take out the fusion plant and all the caretakers. That would have slowed Kingstead down a bunch. I mean, Kingstead's still accessing quite a bit. And there's a lot of room for these fen these Ravagers to do the damage they need to do, but man. Still doing fine, though. I mean, they're still holding on. Kingstead's trying to get around the back and deal some damage, but Catastrophe is fairly well prepared for that. Or just doesn't care and has enough of an economy that really don't have to worry. I really don't know what's going on with that. At any rate, I do know what's going on with the Ravagers, and they're doing a lot of damage, which Phoenixes are simply not well equipped to deal with. I mean, okay, they burn. That's fine. It's not a huge problem. And Catastrophe is still pushing in once again, taking out all those backline metal extractors. While at the same time, Scorchers... Ooh, actually, Scorchers doing a bit of damage on Revenge. Catastrophe having a bit of a harder time expanding as a result. But that may not matter. Catastrophe coming in, flanking. They have Privateers on one side, they have Scorchers on the other. And there is nothing really that King's Dad can do here, just as the Ravagers... Well, they Ravage, and the Scorchers Scorch. And the Lotus is Lotus, and make it very difficult for the Scorch to do anything. Not sure how that counters, but apparently it does. So the Ravagers are the main force here. I mean, they feel like almost a bit of a distraction. But Catastrophe is moving in with enough Scorches to stop the Lotuses. Once the Lotuses are down, that will probably... Yeah, that'll open enough for Kingstead to be torn apart by the Scorchers. I mean, the Phoenixes are going to be a bit better option against the Scorchers than they are against the Ravagers, but even then, the Scorchers are just too fast. Getting around everywhere, the Swift's trying to stop them as well, but simply not able to do so. There's the Phoenix coming in with a good solid hit, taking out most of the Scorchers, but there are enough Scorchers to take out the rest of the Metal Extractors on top of the reinforcements coming from Catastrophe, as Kingstead simply does not have the forces needed to take out what is being built. Rippers are being built out, but it's a little bit too late for them. And it's a nice sentiment. It's just not going to be doing enough as Catastrophe has torn apart almost all of Kingstead's expansions. Kingstead definitely doing their job. They're rebuilding. They're not reclaiming a huge amount. But they're at least getting the Metal Extractors back. But it, may, it doesn't look like it's going to matter. The Scorchers are just doing too much damage. The Ravagers are hanging out, but, you know, they can just come in and start dealing damage as well. The Rippers finally getting into the position they need. But again, with enough Ravagers here, it's not that big of a deal. On top of that, Air Control will likely go over to Catastrophe as soon as they decide to send in the Swifts. So with that, Catastrophe looks to be likely throwing in the towel, and if this happens, I think that'll be Saniac versus... Uh, who would that be? I think that's Saniac versus... Izzeride. No, Izzeride lost. What? Really? I think Saniac might have just won this without tiebreakers. I mean, might have tiebreakers for third place, but... I think first place is gonna be Saniac. Despite Kingstead starting out very strong in this tournament, looks like Saniac has managed to pull through and become the winner. That is a shock. I mean, unless Kingstead is something I'm not seeing in terms of a comeback mechanism, but they have half the economy. They have a Strider hub, but it's not building anything. I don't even know how a Strider would even help here. Honestly, Strider is basically only going to be useful for getting Catastrophe the game. Like, just building a Strider for Catastrophe would obviously win them the game because they have the firepower. Building a Strider for Kingstead would give Catastrophe the game because then Catastrophe wouldn't have to worry about all these smaller units being built up actually stopping their own army. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Kingstead trying desperately to get themselves back in the game. And they have a lot of reclaim to work with. I'm a little surprised they haven't gone for it more aggressively. They have you know, 10 metal per second coming, or 13 metal per second for reclaim, which is nice. It's just, you, know, you, could, you can get more. Like, you have another crane here. It's not doing anything. But again, it's kind of a moot point. Catastrophe has two-thirds of the map to their name. Kingstead, they're barely holding on to what they have over to the north. And now, with the Scorchers coming in and hardly any defenses there, the Rippers are entirely out of position over to the south side of the map to stop all the Scorchers coming in from there, but not the Scorchers coming in from the north. Another Phoenix coming out here to try to stop, but it's going to take out one Scorcher. Not really all that effective. Two Scorchers, ultimately, but still. Kingstead, they have no defenses left. The Scorchers are just having a field day, and Catastrophe doesn't even care. They're actually accessing quite a bit, even as it is. But they don't even care. Just going in hard along all sides, and forcing K Kingstead to burn their own base to try to help defend. But it doesn't even matter. The Scorchers... 
they deal enough damage on the outsides, opening everything up. And now here comes the second assault. The Ravagers coming in around the back. Ravens, are you going to finally do your job? There we go. Take out that fusion plant, which I should have done five minutes ago. And that is it. King's Dead throws in the towel. Catastrophe takes the game and put themselves up into basically third place, I think. Or a third place contender. So I'm pretty sure the way this is going to work is going to have Saniac wins. Kingstad is tied. Oh, wow. We have a four-way tie for third place. Kingstad, Izzeride, Catastrophe, and Dyth all have three wins and two losses. But Saniac won. It's just second place, third place. Like, that's... Yeah. Okay. That'll be interesting. But Saniac has definitely won. It's definitely their tournament. So yeah, I see Kingsdown and Catastrophe are... Oops. Let's see here. Kingsdown and Catastrophe are... How are we doing here? Gah! So yeah, King's Dead Catastrophe, that leaves... So Seniac is 4-1, King's Dead's 3-2, Ezra's King 3-2, Dice 3-2, Catastrophe's 3-2. So I think we're going to be having second place tiebreakers. I guess we'll just have a bracket for second, like a single limb... Semifinals, finals, bracket for second. This is long tiebreakers, apparently. It's kind of funny because normally we were doing Swiss into brackets for the top level or the top players, but now it's for the second place. Fight and die for silver. All right, and there we go. Now we've got everything set up. Crush that. So yeah. Four-way tie for second place. Oof. So I'm guessing Akron's going to set up the bracket for that as we get into what'll basically be tie... I'm going to double check. We're... Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so we're doing a single elimination bracket for the tiebreakers for second place. And I'm not sure there's going to be another bracket for this or what. Since okay, we're getting into the bracket, so I will we'll move on. We'll get to. I mean, it's tiebreak bracket. <laughs> Silver tiebreak bracket. So yeah, that's that's new. So we'll be back with that.